So thank you, thank you very much uh, for the floor and thank you very much for inviting me and allowing me to contribute to this uh, debate on the future of forest governance. So I must say I really appreciate every opportunity that enables us, us to discuss in like very open-minded uh, collectives about the future forests. And I'm also very much aware how very important role the culture and art have in these processes. Uh, going to the theaters, galleries, uh, reading literature and uh, attending performances gives us hope that we can find a common language. It's much easier, like, you know, with involving the art and culture than just discussing the, the simple, uh, basic, uh, professional uh, words and data. So, um, yeah, I believe that for our common future is really important that we can discuss. And yeah, I also believe that forests and trees are sort of the embodiment of our future, which, dep which depends on how um, successful we are in this um, coexistence with nature. That's what also uh, Theo was talking about uh, before me. So it's it's really for me it's really important how how we are able to find like uh, common starting points and then working also together in towards common goals. And um, long story short, when the invitation for the conference caught me, I was immersed with these questions uh, about the future of uh, of forest governance. And then again, uh, I had these two theses I could share with you, but I wasn't like really feeling really comfortable with them. I was uh, searching for solutions, how to present them so that you could uh, maybe catch them and easily uh, follow the ideas. So allow me that I sort of share the, the, the background and uh, how I bind them together in this um, story of last year. So it all started uh, with the early beginning of this year when uh, citizens were like sort of um, um, hit by this really intensive felling of trees on the city hill of Rožnik, the, the forest on the city hill that also reaches the house we are now sitting in. You, you should uh, have this idea about this festive time when people are, you know, being around and, and being like really uh, very, um, you know, uh, happy and having nice times. And then they would go also as they are used to, to this forest as, you know, for recreation and regeneration. And then, then they hit to this situation that, that is really, um, really uh, giving a strong impact impression that something is wrong. There is something wrong. There is not unusual, you know, whatever work in forest, the, the, the work is like really uh, showing the intensive cutting and people are starting send messages, calling and asking what is going on, researching. And they didn't, uh, they weren't able to find any kind of uh, really uh, good uh, explanations. Which was so they were aware that the cutting will come. They, they knew that the cutting will, would, will come. They would find the announcements in the forest and area, but they wouldn't have the explanation. Why? Why in such manner? It's really important. Why in such manner? It was an unusual manner. So when when we started to talk, when we also decided we have to go and protest in front of the city hall. So the um, civil society. Uh, together with um, young youth for climate justice protested in front of the city hall and we demanded from the mayor's office three things. Stop the cutting, explain the purposes and manner of the kind you are doing it, and open the debate about the future management on urban forest in relation to climate change and to its ecological and social functions. Slowly the information would come, but not from the city hall. So all other different in, in, uh, organizations would, would raise the voice, but not the city hall. So the protests and the follow, following activities, uh, along with the very nice online interdisciplinary roundtable, weren't successful. The explanations would arrive through media, from different institutions, but not from the municipality. The cutting only was stopped due to inspection report. 
So that was our first whatever summer impression, how I started the year. The second part goes to who I am and to who, who I am when this is happening. So I'm a landscape architect and I'm totally messed up with this what's happening. I was trained at the biotechnical faculty in 80s and one of the best professors and one of the best lecturers were the foresters. Forester, that, that there were forester classes and there were forester teachers who were like the great, you know, really knowledgeable men. And besides that, what is really important, what I learned it was, or we all learned, that Slovenian forestry is really sustainable one. That is, it is specific in a national, uh, international um, correlation. So it's something very special. And meaning that, of course, it's not just uh, thinking about economical value, but always thinking about the long-term ecological uh, strength of the, of the forest, so of the surviving, of, of being there for us in, in, in a longer period, and also of uh, serving to um, the public with different um, social services. So knowing that, I was like really... Ooh, that, that was really something for me, uh, trying to find what, what, what happened to Slovenian forestry, what, what changed. Uh, so my first um, mm, uh, serious um, mm, work for the municipality, commissioned by the municipality of Ljubljana, uh, a study commissioned by the municipality of Ljubljana was actually the one dealing with urban forests in the city. So this study taught me few things. First, that as early as at the end of the 19th century, the town people demanded that the town's forest should be made public and that uh, unrestricted accessibility should be assured, as well as the aesthetic functions and landscape beauty should lead the management. That the ownership of the forests is mixed and that private owners have different interests than the public ones. So we have to collaborate and we have to deal about how we are going to manage. That recreational use is contrary to the interests of private owners. So again, we have to declare areas which are important for recreation and we have to manage it according to it and to sort of uh, deal with the ownership uh, obstacles. That the act uh, on forests that was declared in 1993 in a freshly uh, declared new states of Slovenia enabled the owners and the, the, the local municipalities or, or public um, uh, officials to declare actually forests that, that have a special purpose. Meaning exactly the forests that have like really important social role or ecological role to get a, a special meaning forest declaration and being uh, managed differently. Managed in the relation of use, in the relation of cutting, but also in the relation, in the relation with the owners. It, this, these things have to, uh, have to be um, uh, cleared and um, uh, dealt properly. So, when we presented at that time in the 90s this study to, to, to the mayor, at that time he wasn't like really interested, but the municipality in the years followed um, declared the, the, the forest with a special purpose into the forest we were uh, starting the year with is a forest with a special pur purpose. So it's the forest that is uh, protected as, uh, as a, a nature and natural and uh, cultural um, uh, heritage, but it is also a a forest with a special purpose. Further on, I was like following what's going on in the forestry and, you know, being like on many conferences and, you know, in, on inter even following the interdisciplinary discussions uh, they always talking about. And I was having this idea that I understand what's going on. But obviously in last 15 years, I was losing some parts. So there comes the third part and the moment I was invited to the conference and I was traveling to my like annual short seaside holidays at the beginning of the summer. 
I traveled to Brioni Islands, not for the first time, but this time I was really intrigued by the story of the Slovenian forester there. So there is this guy who is invited to Brioni Islands because he is a Slovenian forester and Slovenian for foresters were sort of uh, advised to be hired to the new, new owner of the, the, the islands, uh, the archipelago, because he has to heal this um, landscape. So he first invited Mr. Robert Koch to deal with malaria. So the, the gentleman was really wise and he wasn't raising low, he was raising really high. The Robert Koch himself came there, but to restore the landscape and to, to design the area to be a healing and restorative uh, area until today's and became a heaven on earth, as they said, he hired a Slovenian forester. So this <laughs> Anton Schufer that, that I was like following him for four years going there around was now a totally new person. And uh, he was like the, the, the one, you know, part of this uh, uh, patchwork I was like sewing together that we have like this really great heritage. Like, we are well known, you know, in a wider community, how well we are able to uh, manage forests. So the second part of being in, uh, on the island, you walk around and cross and forward, back and forward. But the, se the second thing you are doing on this island, you are reading all the time. So there, here comes this little, very small book. It's um, um, the book um, uh, by Oliver Sacks, The Journey to Oksaca, Oks Oks Osaka. Oaxaca, I think it's Oaxaca. So it is actually a book that describes an organized travel of amateur naturalists uh, to Mexico to discover um, uh, and study uh, specific specimens of fern. They are actually members of um, an American association of uh, fern lovers. And in this book, there is this sentence. He is saying that they may seem a little bit silly looking around for these plants and being really happy to, to find a specimen they were dreaming about to, to, to see alive. But actually, a lot of discoveries in nature uh, studies is was done by people who weren't trained as biologists or nature protect, protection people, but they were like amateurs, like them. So, and I was thinking, oh yeah, that's true. Uh, even in Slovenia, we have this heritage. Of course, we have this heritage. A lot of people being like uh, mountain lovers, hiking lovers, they are also nature protection people. A lot of hunters are not you know, foresters, but they, they, they do participate and they, they know a lot and they raise awareness and so on. So yeah, there was another thing I was, you know, sort of picking it in my baggage and I say, okay, I have like two things. I have this great heritage of forestry and I have this real nation that really loves nature and is really well known for being um, really ambitious in um, protecting it uh, in all sorts of ways, also non-professional, uh, a civil society in different kind of um, uh, associations. So this, there is this landscape. I was like walking around and thinking about Slovenian forestry and there is Oliver Sachs with his book on this travel. So here I am coming back to the city and because nothing happens just like that, and everything is connected. I went to this uh, theater uh, play, to see this theater play, and there was this like theater play list, uh, leaflet, and my son wrote a text in it. And this text uh, has this um, really um, meaningful, for me, meaningful um, um, address, and it, it, and it says, um, so here, I, uh, it says like, sorry, I have to find it because I wanna, oh boy, I want to, to to cite it. So we have to look back if we wanna go to the future. So and I was saying, oh, that's back to the future. That's that's the movie. That's true. That's that's what I'm thinking all the time. So um, yeah, uh, what I'm urging now is let us go back. Let us find 
this really good uh, and uh, meaningful heritage of forestry and nature protection, which is like really a very uh, national thing. And let us talk about how we can then manage uh, urban forests uh, much more uh, sustainable and in a way that we won't be like hurt by management because we don't know about it. One part of the uh, talking about civil society being involved in nature protection is also the part that is really close to me because whenever I, I'm talking about management of green space, I, I always advise two things. First, people should know what you're doing and why you are doing whatever you're doing with your parks and green spaces. And second, involve them. Involve them, they will help you, they will bring you new information, they will... They will uh, um, tell you when something is going to get wrong and they, would, they will also help you with hands uh, and with whatever it has to be done in the parks and the gardens so that you can manage better. Uh, and I think that maybe, I don't know, but maybe I, I'm close to, to the end of my speech. Uh, going to the, to the thesis, I have them in my back uh, pack uh, when, when I started to, to think about the conference, but I didn't want to come here with like sort of, you know, I've read this in articles or my findings of the research show this, but I really wanted that we come together to this point that we can talk about that we have to deal it with the forest management interdisciplinary and we have to have in mind the three dimensions of sustainability. So a social, ecological, and economic. We, we, we just should not forget how really important the forest is for us and that longevity of the forest is like actually really um, related to our longevity. And to be really successful in this, we have to be able to uh, cooperate, not just with the owners, not just between different uh, fields of work, but we have to be able to cooperate with people who use the forest, who go to the forest for recreation, and with people who are local residents and live every day with a forest. Thank you.